All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Now come and sit down. Hear about the awesomeness that is Ubuntu. Come on. OK. So um, there's a few things I want to talk about today. Um, but I, I also really wanted to really speak about how awesome this OpenStack's been for me so far. Uh, we've been to basically every uh, OpenStack summit so far. Um, we've had a very good relationship with OpenStack for a very long time. OpenStack was first in Ubuntu in uh, 2010, I guess, around August time. Um, so yeah, we've really been we've really been following it for for quite a while. And every ODS, every uh, summit, we, we we try to do something quite exciting. So you you probably if you were here a year ago. Um, Mark uh, Shuttleworth did a deployment of OpenStack uh, in, in, I guess it was about 12 minutes or so. So we really proved that we could bring up an OpenStack cloud uh, in a very short time. Now, this should not be underestimated because actually it turns out OpenStack is complicated. And to be able to do something reliably in that amount of time is high risk. I mean, you've all seen live demos. There, there is a joke around live demos. You just don't do them. Yeah? But we've managed to pull it off. And that's something I'm very proud of, actually. So we, so we brought up this, this deployment a year ago. And then six months ago, we did another demo where we showed updating from Essex to Folsom. And this is, uh, this is again, we kept the cloud running. No one else was really doing that at this point. And that was, uh, it was to us, it was, a big, it was a big leap forward in, in what people actually do. So people who were there this morning where we did this uh, other deployment, where we did a... Uh, we, we demonstrated HA and rolling out a reboot. Now, I, I, I was actually sat there a little bit concerned that uh, the complexity of what was actually involved there was, was missed by many people. What actually happened was is every machine was rebooted and the cloud was still maintained. Now, you imagine if you've got a production cloud deployment, you can't just turn it off and turn it back on again yeah, and actually still keep stuff going. You, you can't just bring the whole cloud down and bring it back up and people still be able to do their stuff. But he managed to put it off. And that was something that was really quite exciting. Thank you. So I, I'm going to be able to talk about uh, Juju and OpenStack and uh, scaling out services. Um, I, don't even know, I haven't even looked at this. I don't even know why I bought this. Um, so, so Juju. Now, Juju is a service orchestration for cloud mentality. And what this is, it allows you to be able to configure and deploy and scale out services. And deploy services automatically. And we've got a public repository of charms uh, in the charm store. Now, um, charms are, are very much like sort of recipes and manifests and, and this sort of way of, of, of documenting how you actually want to do a deployment. And we've got a charm store you can actually look at. Um, there, there's a video here. I'm not going to play it now. But if you go over to the Ubuntu stand over there, they'll more than happy to put it on there. And that actually explains many of the concepts in, in a very crisp manner. And I, I think it'd be quite exciting. Um, now, actually, so we, we started with just EC2 with Amazon for, for Juju. And we, we quickly realized that it made sense for us not just to speak to one provider. So we changed it so it spoke to many. And in many ways, Juju's actually become the abstraction layer uh, for um, for, for to be able to deploy your workload into a, a cloud or bare metal provider. So you actually see here, we've got many different providers. We've got uh, OpenStack, uh, Amazon, HP, and Rackspace, because you know, it's, it, the OpenStack API is a standard, but in many ways, they, they, they've, they, 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 they are different uh, implementations of this standard, if I, if I can say that. So, uh, but Maz as well for speaking to bare metal. I'll talk about a bit more about that a bit later. So actually, we found that Juju is a command line client, but many people wanted to be able to do, use it in a, in, a, in a graphical manner. And that's actually how we're doing it here using the GUI, the GUI. And this is web browser based. Uh, it's, it's HTML5. And you can actually drag these services around. For people that came to uh, our session uh, six months ago, uh, the, the keynote there, you, should, you would have been able to see it there as well. And th this is actually quite a complicated deployment, which is why it looks kind of scary. But for many people who are deploying much smaller workloads where you might have a database, 
uh, say Django or Rails, and you can pin them together and add relations. It's, it's all about looking after the services and tying together through relations. So it actually provides quite a lot of flexibility, uh, the work we've been doing around OpenStack. Uh, so we actually, uh, we support these different compute backends. Um, so in KVM, uh, it's been our default for, uh, I guess what, five years now? Uh, and I, I, I wasn't sure I agreed with the decision when it first happened, but it turns out it was the right decision. Thanks, Rick. Um, and, and Zen is another one we actually, we, we've supported you know, for a long time. Um, and VMware, you probably saw the announcement just, I don't know, um, what, it was day four yesterday? And where we've actually shown a very good relationship with, with, with VMware. And uh, so if you've got a VMware ESX deployment, you can actually make use of that and grow it out much further. And Hyper-V uh, is another one. We're actually uh, talking to Microsoft at the moment about how we can best make use of that. Uh, we're, we're trying to work together on, on how we can make the Juju charms work that really well. And LXC and Juju. So LXC is a very thin, lightweight container. Uh, so it's not quite a virtualization technology, but it allows you to be able to, um, to be able to deploy for no cost to your local machine and then scale your workload right out uh, to, to full scale. And th that's an area we've been quite strong on. And, uh, and you know, that is, for many people, a way to get introduced to, to Juju. So experimentation. So what we actually found is that many people were, um, were, were, were wanting to deploy OpenStack, and they realized how hard it was. And we heard this morning with the NSA guy uh, that what he did is, it, is he stole a rack of machines from another department and, and just deployed on there and made use of it. And this is actually one thing that's resonating quite a lot from many of our users, is they're starting off. They don't want to go all in. They want to just stick their foot in and see whether it makes sense for them. So what we've been hearing, but many people doing, is getting some machines under the desk in their office and just starting a very small seed cloud. And they've been growing that out, and then it becomes suddenly a resource that many people want to start using. And whilst they do have to make changes to the infrastructure, the networking and things like this, uh, Juju actually helps along the way of that. And what they've also uh, found is that, um, what they found? Oh, so, so Maz, or Metal as a Service, what, what they were able to do was uh, we, we actually virtualize it. So this is some people, perhaps a weird, a weird concept, is virtualizing metal, yeah? I mean, you know, we sort of, so it seems a bit backwards there, but we actually used it as an internal development resource. But we found people actually wanted to use it. They actually wanted to use KVM, and it, uh, at KVM to deploy their metal workload and then be able to grow it as, as, their, as their requirements soared. So in production, uh, what we, so this last cycle, we've done quite a lot of work around high availability. In fact, more than that, high availability plus one, plus n, uh, to be able to have, um, to, to be able to keep your cloud running whilst actually, uh, whilst actually bringing, uh, bringing it down in some regards, but being able to keep it still running. And this is really important because you can't afford to have, to have downtime at any point. And landscape is another area. I'll, I'll probably speak a bit more about that in a few moments. But landscape has the uh, has has the smarts to be able to uh, to be able to help run and predict uh, when you might need to add more hardware to your cloud. Uh, and in fact, I've got some screenshots here for the people that were there this morning. You would have seen it actually in use for it, for doing some of the stuff it did. Uh, for the people that were there at the um, at the Horizon session, we did some great work on Horizon Solometer integration to be able to do some um, uh, measurements on. Uh, on, on resource utilizations, because even in my company's internal cloud, uh, we found that we couldn't work out who was actually using the most resources. And so this is something that become a stem from an internal requirement, because we found that uh, the, the, the only way to get really smart at doing what you're trying to do is to actually use it internally. So we've been trying to put as much production stuff as we can onto an internal cloud. And this is where we've learned some, some hopefully we've uh, made some uh, we, we've made some mistakes and we've learned from them and we're hoping we can help people follow through to avoid making the same mistakes we have. And Canonical uh, has uh, an Ubuntu Advantage program uh, and certification, partner agreements, engineering, new resource stuff. Um, but 
the, but the, 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 real, um, the, the real thing that should be taken from there is that you know, we do have a wealth of knowledge of it on OpenStack, how to deploy it and use it in production. And typically, from, from what I heard from someone, uh, we're something like a, a, th a third to a half cheaper than, than, than many of our competitors. So you know, that, that, that's actually just cost alone. That's worth considering. So MAS, or Metal as a Service. So this is, uh, there's another really good video. It, it uses standard technologies, um, you know, DNS, DHCP, IPMI. We actually done some, some quite clever work around that, and we're supporting that on 1204, the LTS. Um, I recommend going over and, and watching the video, but uh, that, that's something that's, that, that is really something we're very proud of. It makes deploying uh, OpenStack and other uh, workloads that you want close to the Metal to be much easier. And obviously, Juju speaks to that, right? Um, so, so Juju can do this deployment. So this is a, a very pretty UI, um, and this graph, you should see it. When you've got real workloads going up and down across there, the, these bars are spinning up and down. You know, it, I could stare at that all day. It, that, that, I would love to show you one of the guys, so if you come to the stand, I might be able to get you a live demo of that. And I'm not even gonna try to explain this stuff, but it's got you know, a lot of a lot of thoughts gone into the components we've actually got to put that together. And I, I would recommend, you know, if you really want to get into the detail of it, speak to me, speak to one of the other people, and we can really go through some of the meat of what's actually in MAS. So landscape, so as I say, landscape uh, speaks through Juju to do a lot of the things that was, that was doing. This is the uh, predictions. Doing things, the heat maps, so such as the networking one, that was really hard to actually work out utilization on a network. Uh, but the, 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 the landscape team did some great work around there, and I think this is one of the richest UIs for managing an OpenStack deployment out there. It's well worth checking out. And I think we're actually doing some sort of demos that you can do on site and, and things. It's, it, there, there's some people all around the landscape that you should go and speak to about that. And actually, this was, it's a shame that you couldn't really see in the keynote this morning, uh, but. The, the way it was waving out the actual kernel update where it was uh, bouncing machines up and down, um, it, it would have been good just to look at this page for the whole 15 minutes, and you could have seen how it was going through step by step. It's actually got the intelligence within this to be able to roll out, the, uh, roll out and maintain HA plus N. Now, I've just got a few minutes left for questions, and uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll be thrilled to field them now. Um, uh, so. Any questions? Hello. Is landscape is landscape community based? Um, no. So landscape is a uh, it, it, it's one of I think it's our only closed source uh, project actually, um, but it actually uh, comes. As, as, as part of Ubuntu Advantage. And Ubuntu Advantage uh, is actually really important because what it does provide is a way of getting uh, an, an escalation path. So you've got some of the smartest engineers that they're, they're, there's a level three where they can speak to them and you can actually get uh, issues you've got uh, resolved in a timely manner. And, and landscape actually becomes uh, as part of a no cost bolt on to that. Um, I, I don't deal directly with the, the, the finance side of things, but there are people that do over there, and it's actually quite uh, com competitive. It, it's not an expensive service. Any other questions? Can I say, hey, Jay? Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. <laughs>